Cloning is a common theme in science fiction. But scientists have been cloning animals since the late 1800s when a sea urchin was first cloned. Frogs were first cloned in the 1950s. And sheep and cows were cloned in the 1980s. So is it any surprise that in January 2024, Chinese scientists reported that they had successfully cloned a rhesus monkey that had survived into adulthood? In this video, we will examine what is cloning, how are animals cloned, and why are monkeys used in biomedical research. Stick around to the end of this video as we consider, should we clone non-human primates? Before we can answer that question, we must first examine what is cloning. Cloning is the process of making an exact copy of something. A non-scientific example of cloning is the function in image editing software that copies an object so it can be placed multiple times into an image. Scientific cloning applies to making exact copies of organisms, cells, or even DNA. In this example, we see the process of molecular cloning for the production of human insulin by genetically engineered bacteria. The human insulin gene contains the instructions for making insulin coded in its DNA, and the segment is colored blue on this diagram. The human DNA is combined with bacterial DNA and inserted into a bacterial cell. As the bacteria grows and divides, it continues to copy the human DNA so that each descendant cell has the information for making human insulin. The bacteria grow in large vats so the insulin can be isolated, purified, and made available to patients with diabetes. Another type of cloning is associated with the formation of many copies of cells, either in the laboratory or in the body. Cancer is a disease in which affected cells divide uncontrollably, causing a collection of clones to form a tumor. Mutations in the DNA of these cells can result in subclones that are either more or less harmful to the patient. The other type of cloning is making copies of organisms with the same DNA. Many plants can reproduce through a process called vegetative propagation. If you've ever placed a plant clipping or leaf in water, to root and grow into a new plant, you have effectively cloned the original. Similar to vegetative propagation, some animals are able to reproduce by fragmentation. An example of this is a starfish that can regrow a severed arm. But more interestingly, that severed arm can grow into a new cloned starfish. This cloning as a form of asexual reproduction isn't possible in higher animals such as mammals, like sheep, monkeys, and humans. Still, a form of natural cloning is possible under very limited conditions early in development and can result in identical twins. Monozygotic or identical twins develop from a single fertilized egg. As the embryonic ball of cells develops from the fertilized egg, that ball can split in half. Each half in this rare but natural process has the same DNA and each half can develop into an individual. In essence, Astronaut twins Mark and Scott Kelly are genetic clones of each other. A process similar to the formation of identical twins was used by scientists at the Oregon Regional Primate Research Center who succeeded in cloning a research monkey named Tetra in 1999. In their cloning process, they used in vitro fertilization to produce embryos from eggs and sperm in the laboratory. Once the fertilized egg began to divide to produce more cells, the embryo was split in half and each half was implanted into a surrogate mother to develop. In the previous examples, identical clones were created by using natural or artificial processes to create twins. A more advanced goal for cloning is the creation of individuals that are exact copies of an existing organism. This was first accomplished in the creation of Dolly the Sheep in 1996. On February 22, 1997, a team of scientists from Scotland announced that they had successfully cloned a sheep. Unlike previous animals cloned by splitting embryos, this clone was created using an adult donor cell. Codenamed 6LL3, the sheep was renamed Dolly after country singer Dolly Parton because the DNA came from adult mammary gland cells. This cloning process is more complicated and difficult than the artificial twinning caused by splitting an embryo. These animals were cloned in a process in which the nuclei of adult donor cells are combined with an egg cell without a nucleus in a process called somatic cell nuclear transfer. 
The DNA from the donor nucleus will provide the information to the growing embryo, which can then be implanted into a surrogate mother. Dolly developed severe arthritis and a progressive lung disease, so was euthanized at six years of age, rather than living the full 11 to 12 years of a sheep's lifespan. At the time, there were concerns that the aging effects on the DNA of adult cells contributed to these conditions. But additional sheep cloned from the same cells were healthy and, develop and didn't develop these conditions. In 2017, Chinese scientists used a similar process of nuclear transfer to that used to clone Dali, the sheep, to clone Mac monkeys. Their names were Zhongzong Zhong and Hua Hua, after the Chinese word Zhong Ha, which means Chinese people. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I apologize. However, they used fetal skin cells, so the process is in between artificial twinning by splitting early embryos and cloning of an adult using the nuclei of body cells. As of early 2024, both of these cloned monkeys are six years old and doing well. In order to clone these monkeys, the scientists first isolated fetal skin cells and grew them in the laboratory. They then removed the nucleus, the region of the cell that contains the DNA, from an egg cell. They inserted the nucleus and its DNA from the fetal skin cells into the enucleated egg, the egg without a nucleus, monitored early development in the laboratory much like in vitro fertilization, and when ready, implanted this cloned embryo into a surrogate mother. Attempts to use adult cells as a source of donor DNA were not successful in producing viable births. The same Chinese scientists that produced Zhongzong and Hua Hua in 2018 announced in January 2024 that a cloned monkey born in 2020 is now an adult at almost three years of age. What makes this announcement so important is that the monkey named Retro is the first rhesus monkey cloned from body cells rather than early embryos to survive longer than a day. To create the clone, they used the same technique as was used to create Zong Zong Hua Hua with a few improvements. They improved their previous cloning technique by implanting the cloned embryo into a healthy placenta. Early in development, the embryo rearranges into a mass of cells that will become the new individual surrounded by a hollow ball of cells that will develop into the placenta. In this diagram, the red cells are the cloned cells that will develop into the monkey, and the blue structures represent the monkey embryo created through in vitro fertilization. The blue mass of cells that would become the new in vitro fertilization monkey is removed, leaving behind the hollow ball of cells that will become the placenta. To pr improve the success of their cloning, they implanted the red clone cells into the blue hollow ball that will become the placenta of a surrogate mother who will give birth to the cloned monkey. Now that we know how animals, specifically monkeys, are cloned, we can look at the use of monkeys and other non-human primates in biomedical research. Monkeys and other non-human primates are an important research model for many bio biomedical experiments because of their genetic and physiological similarities to human. While we share 85 to 92 percent of our DNA with mice, we share 96 to 98 percent of our DNA with primates such as monkeys. Despite being less than 1% of animals used in medical research, monkeys and non-human primates are essential for research on diseases such as HIV, multiple sclerosis, and Parkinson's disease, and they, are crucial, they were crucial for the development of COVID-19 vaccines. While some monkeys used in research are bred and raised in captivity, there is still an unmet need for monkeys collected from the wild. These wild monkey populations are now becoming threatened as deforestation, human consumption, and use in biomedical research increases. In biomedical research, animal models often use genetically identical organisms to minimize variability. Now that it is possible, but still difficult, to clone monkeys, it may be possible to create monkeys with specific genes or gene mutations in order to better study human disease processes. As we consider the ethical dilemma in science for this week, please leave your comments below on whether or not we should clone non-human primates. To answer this question, we must first consider, should cloning be used to protect vulnerable primate species from extinction? Should cloned primates or other animals of vulnerable species be under the same protection as animals in the wild? And finally, 
Should the decision to clone an animal depend on its ultimate use of the animals, such as repopulation of the species in the wild or medical research? In the description below is additional information, references, and a link to a lesson plan to accompany this video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe for more conversations on the ethical impact of science and technology on society. Until next time, stay curious and be informed.